Hi, my name is Satwan and welcome to this video where I'll be showing you some of the best subscription billing systems which are designed for large enterprises. Before we begin, if you're a small to medium sized business, please watch my video called 6 Best Subscription Billing Software Systems where I go through a similar list of solutions that are probably more suitable for your company. So I've structured this video in two parts. In part one, I'll discuss all of the factors that you should consider when you're going through your selection and shortlisting process. This is really important because the solution that you select should not only meet your needs today, but also be flexible enough to help you adjust your pricing to compete with new startups that will inevitably try to disrupt your business or industry if they haven't done so already. In the second part of the video, I'll show you 11 enterprise subscription billing solutions that could be a great fit for your customers and your company. I won't be providing a feature by feature comparison of each solution because quite frankly that would take two or more hours and I'm sure you don't have that kind of time to spare. Instead, I'll give you some highlights of each solution which will help you to get a better idea of which system might be more suitable for your project. Please watch the video right until the end because I've included some bonus material and resources which you might find extremely useful. So let's get started. Okay, let's start with the basics. I'm going to run through this section quite quickly because you should be familiar with these concepts, but I did want to cover these points for the sake of completeness. If you're looking for any subscription or e-commerce billing solution, you'll need to ensure that you have a payment gateway, payment processing capability, and the ability to integrate the solution into your company's e-commerce systems using APIs or application programming interfaces. Some companies such as Stripe offer all three pieces of functionality and other companies may provide only the payment processing or payment gateway piece in addition to their API. Make sure you understand how each piece of this basic functionality is provided and implemented so that you can figure out how the billing solution will work in production. The second part of your checklist should determine whether the billing system you're looking at is capable of dealing with the types of products, services and use cases within your company. The first question you need to answer is, does the billing solution allow you to sell subscriptions just for digital products or will it also allow you to sell subscriptions for physical products and services as well? Your company may only sell software or services today but this may change in future when your company or industry is disrupted by a startup, as I mentioned earlier. If you look at the most successful companies in the world today, which are the leaders in their industry, they combine the digital and physical world to create amazing experiences for their customers. Once customers get used to those experiences and find they can't live without them, they'll happily keep paying for them because those experiences basically become a habit. Some examples that I can think of include fitness apps, which track your sports activity on the Apple Watch. Another example is how Walt Disney leverages st the Star Wars movies on the Disney TV app to encourage kids to go to the Star Wars rides in their theme parks. And lastly, BMW, they've created a new digital car key which runs on the iPhone. And these are all examples of how the physical and digital worlds have been fully integrated which keeps users coming back and continually paying high premiums for these experiences. The third part of your checklist needs to consider the use case or multiple use cases for your billing system. The first use case is SaaS billing or software as a service. And this of course is a massively growing area of e-commerce. In addition to software as a service, this use case includes anything to do with cloud computing or software sales. Historically, regular online billing systems were modified to sell software online, but these modifications were simply not adequate to handle all of the complexities of selling software. Companies selling software need to be able to account for a multitude of factors, including things like license keys, multiple software licensing models, selling via partners and distributors, offering trials and incentives, selling direct and via the channel, selling internationally, and these are just some of the many challenges that enterprise software billing systems need to deal with. Marketplaces are the second use case to consider. Since Airbnb came onto the scene, the number of marketplaces all over the world has exploded. 
There are now marketplaces where you can rent cars locally in your neighbourhood. You can rent boats in many cities around the world. And you can even rent swimming pools and gardens from people who will be away from home for extended periods of time. With this growth in marketplaces has come the need for billing systems to process payouts to the bank accounts of individuals and businesses who supply these marketplaces with all of these goods and services. Even though your company may not currently have any plans for a marketplace, this could rapidly change as the pace of disruption increases in every industry thanks to technology and software. Check if the billing solution that you're evaluating has the ability to pay money out in addition to accepting payments in from customers. And the third use case to consider is platforms. Your company may eventually offer a platform on which other businesses can build their own company. A classic example is Shopify, where retailers can buy a reliable and highly scalable e-commerce platform for just $30 a month. Shopify provides merchants with their own payment processing solution called ShopPay, which offers merchants low fees and fast checkout for end customers. If you're going to build a platform in future, make sure that your billing system can handle it. In this next section, I'll go through the actual payment methods and systems you need to consider for your enterprise subscription billing solution. Let's start with digital wallets. The use of digital wallets has grown rapidly over the past few years because of the convenience they offer when shopping on mobile devices. Digital wallets like PayPal, Apple Pay, Google Pay and Samsung Pay eliminate the need to enter card numbers, expiry dates and delivery and billing addresses, which is an absolute pain on tiny screens. There are three things to consider with digital wallets. The first and most obvious one is, does your billing solution work with digital wallets? Digital wallets reduce friction and car abandonment, so this functionality is becoming more and more important over time. Secondly, does this solution work with all digital wallets or just some of them? Some billing solutions only work with Apple Pay and not Google Pay, as an example. You want to ensure that your billing system will accept what customers use in the different markets in which your company sells its products and services. So in India, for example, Android has a 95% market share and Apple iOS only has a 3% market share. So if India is a big potential market for your products and services, a billing system that only works well with Apple Pay and PayPal won't be acceptable. Thirdly, you have to take into account any fees that Apple, Google, Samsung or even Microsoft may take from your share of revenue. Many software developers constantly complain about Apple taking 30% of their revenue from transactions completed through iPhone apps. Some companies simply charge 30% more for subscriptions which are created on the apps instead of on their websites. This may not be a problem for a music subscription that's $9.99 a month, but may be a real problem for your customers if your service costs hundreds or thousands of dollars a month. Next, it goes without saying that if your company sells internationally, you want your billing system to charge in multiple currencies. Visa, MasterCard and American Express all charge currency conversion fees and most customers would prefer not to be charged extra fees to buy a subscription from you. In 2021, there really is no excuse to bill customers only in the currency where your company headquarters is located if you sell internationally. Billing in local currencies is now easier than ever, so put this at the top of your list of requirements if your customers are worldwide. Next, following on from that point, let's talk about local payment methods for international sales. It's easier to assume that everybody in the world has a Visa or a MasterCard if you live in an English-speaking country like the US or the UK or Australia. However, hundreds of millions of people around the world either don't have a debit card or credit card, or they've leapfrogged this old and outdated technology entirely and moved straight to mobile payments. So in Asia, payment systems like Paytm in India or Alipay in China dominate the digital payments landscape. If we look at Europe, and specifically the Netherlands as an example, a payment method called Ideal accounts for 50% of online transactions in the country. One of the guests on my payment podcast called The Payments Show, which I'll discuss in more detail at the end of this video, said that in Japan, there is a payment system called Konbini, 
And their data shows that when Konbini is presented as a payment method, shopping cart conversion went up by 18%, even though only 12% of customers actually ended up using it to complete the transaction. So that shows a level of comfort and familiarity which helps the customer with their purchasing decision, even though they may not use that payment method. Now, in order to present a local country-specific payment method to your end customers, you need to check that the vendor for your billing solution has local entities in each country. This will save you the hassle of having to sign agreements with payment companies in every country on the planet, which I'm sure that no sane person watching this video would want to do. The next two features may be relevant for you if you charge customers a one-off fee in combination with subscription payments. The first one is invoicing, and the second one is payment links. When it comes to invoicing, specifically I want to talk about hosted invoices. This is where customers are sent to a web page to make a payment. And this is far more efficient instead of emailing PDF invoices, which can get lost and delayed. Payment links essentially do the same thing, but these are often sent out via SMS messages in addition to email or as an alternative to email. Next, let's discuss a critical piece of functionality, which is the ability to offer customers a portal so they can self-manage their subscriptions. So firstly, you need to decide whether you want to host it on your own IT systems or have it managed for you. Secondly, customers should be able to update payment methods themselves, such as changing their primary credit or debit cards, or using a digital wallet such as PayPal instead. Customers should also be able to upgrade, downgrade or cancel their plans. And finally, customers should be able to download their own invoices and see their payment history. All of this functionality will save your company money by not having to hire customer service staff in call centers or answer emails from customers requesting these changes or payment history. In this next section, I want to discuss the commercial aspects you need to consider so that your billing solution can handle different subscription pricing models. It won't come as a surprise that these three methods of subscription billing are the most commonly used across all software and services. Every single subscription billing solution should be able to handle per seat billing or billing based on a period of time such as monthly, annually or whatever time period is more suitable for your customers. Where enterprise subscription billing systems really come into play is for metered or usage-based billing. The software vendor that you choose needs to be able to handle the usage metrics that are relevant to your product or service. For example, a motor insurance or car hire company might charge premiums based on the number of miles that a customer is driving every week. Alternatively, a market research company's usage metric might include the number of PDF reports that somebody downloads or reads. These three billing models are fairly simple to understand. So next, I want to discuss where things can start to get tricky for your billing system. Let's start with freemium pricing models. Companies like Dropbox and Microsoft will give you a certain amount of cloud storage until you reach the limit after which you'll need to pay for a subscription. And this is a tried and tested model. If we move on to free trials, the most common models are to either give access for a limited amount of time, such as 14 days or 30 days, or usage-based limits can apply. For example, The Spectator magazine in the UK allows you to read three free articles per month, after which you need to pay £10.99 a month. With both freemium and free trials, your billing system needs to be able to handle usage-based metrics if that is how your business works right now. The next pricing model is quite straightforward, which is when you charge a set upfront fee with ongoing monthly payments. This is simply bolting together a standard e-commerce payment with a recurring billing element, and this should not be a problem for an enterprise billing system to handle. Next, your company might have a requirement to offer custom pricing deals to customers. In this situation, your billing system not only needs to be highly flexible and customizable, but it must have easily adjustable workflows. That's because there are two ways that these custom pricing deals can be structured. Firstly, for simple custom pricing, you want to be able to send a customer a payment link. But secondly, more complex deals 
can often be based on consumption or volume. There could be tiers and there could be penalties for not consuming enough of your service as agreed in the contract. And lastly, you may need to mix and match these different pricing models to different customer segments. The next set of requirements, in my view, are the most important for any business, and that is the ability for your billing system to increase the average order value from each customer. Let me first set the scene. Ads, SEO, and getting traffic is very expensive. So once a customer arrives on your website, You want to sell them as much as you can based on what they'll get value from. Every company can offer discounts, but it's not smart. And this is the path to oblivion if the only thing your company knows how to do is discounting. You want to intelligently cross-sell and upsell products. Sales are much more likely to convert and increase if customers are shown relevant upsells and additional products. Now I want you to consider pricing adjustments and which ones will be the most important for your billing system. The ability to backdate the start of a subscription is another variation of the free trial or freemium model. So the most typical one is you can try out this service for seven days and then if you want to keep using it, we'll bill you from the date you actually signed up. Secondly, being able to prorate subscription payments is very important to maintain customer satisfaction if they have the option to upgrade or downgrade their subscription in the middle of a billing cycle. Nobody wants to be overcharged for any service or feel as if they have lost out by not waiting for the right time to change their plan. People are busy and they'll never remember if you set time limits or specific dates that they have to do things. Next, the ability to schedule subscriptions is quite important for services like physical magazine delivery or food delivery boxes as a few examples. Once again, customers should not have to wait to sign up on the day of the next billing cycle. And lastly, once again, you may want to offer custom pricing adjustments or multiple adjustments together. Now let's move on to what I think is the second most important set of capabilities after upsells and cross-sells, and that has to do with dunning. If you're not familiar with Dunning, it's a term used to describe the process of collecting missed or outstanding payments. The most common reasons for missed payments include card expiry, a lost credit or debit card, insufficient funds, a customer being away on holiday, or a customer has a new card but hasn't updated their details. Speaking from personal experience, whenever I've missed payments, it is never because of insufficient funds. It is always because of card numbers changing for the various reasons I just mentioned. I've also had my podcast guests tell me that insufficient funds are often not the main reason why payments are missed. The main reason is because it's just not easy to pay certain companies. Let me explain what your billing system should include to improve your Dunning score. Firstly, it should be able to handle multi-channel communications. And that means either via SMS messaging, email or in-app notifications. People need to be reminded to pay for something at the right time. Can your billing system do this? It's a really important question so that you don't have lots of missed payments. Next is reminders and they need to be timely as I just said. There's no point emailing somebody at 9am on Monday morning when they're just starting work. Your billing system needs to have scheduling built in for reminders so that those reminders are most effective. Next, cancellation policies. If it's always a pain to cancel your service and you have no information on your website on how to do it, customers will always take the path of least resistance and cancel the payments. This has nothing to do with the billing system, but more to do with basic customer service, which in my experience seems to be lacking in a lot of cases. Following on from this, customers should be able to update payment methods themselves within the billing system. This is one factor that can massively reduce missed and outstanding payments and is an area where digital wallets can help. If your company accepts a digital wallet like PayPal, PayPal allows a customer to enter multiple payment methods and set the payment hierarchy in case one payment method fails. So a customer can easily set a bank account and a debit card and a credit card in a certain hierarchy, which will cover all scenarios. And this kind of system saves your company the hassle of missed payments and puts the burden on PayPal and the customer instead. 
Next, you want your billing system to send customers through some kind of retention sequence if they try to cancel. Companies offer all sorts of deals and discounts or extra services to prevent them from cancelling. Your billing system should be able to accommodate these kinds of capabilities to prevent losing customers. Lastly, a new feature which more and more billing systems are including is an automatic card updater. The way this works is that payment processing companies have direct links to card issuers where they can pull the details of the new card and update them automatically. This saves both the customer and your company's revenue from being affected by a card number change. Now I want to discuss the features and capabilities that you may need in your billing solution which are highly tailored towards large enterprises. The first capability is a merchant of record. A merchant of record is a term to describe a legal entity that sells products and services to a cardholder. This means that they process the payments, collect the taxes and take on all of the liabilities involved in selling to customers such as chargebacks and refund requests. And lastly, making sure they are compliant with payment regulations. In most cases, a company, such as your company or business, will be the merchant of record. However, this doesn't always make sense in all situations. And one such situation is if you want to sell internationally. If your company sells mainly in one country, but you could potentially grow more rapidly overseas, you don't necessarily want to take on the risk, expense and overhead required to do that. This is where a billing system from a vendor that is also a merchant of record can be a perfect solution. Billing solutions from vendors that are merchants of record have got legal entities all over the world and they have agreements in place with payment companies which are country specific. There is simply no way that most companies could justify that kind of expense. Therefore look for a vendor which is a merchant of record if international sales are a key requirement from your solution. Next, let's take a look at tax rates. Of course, different countries have different tax rates and it's quite f straightforward to set those. What could be trickier is to implement things like state and federal taxes in countries like the USA, where they can be different in each state. Next, your company will need to make sure it is fully compliant with payment regulations that are being introduced all over the world. In Europe, there are regulations such as PSD2, which stands for the Payment Services Directive. In the UK, there is something called SCA, which stands for Strong Customer Authentication. And there are similar regulations being developed in most countries around the world. Ensuring that your payment system complies with these regulations is very important from a legal liability standpoint. Being compliant helps to protect your customers and your company from security threats and data breaches of sensitive financial data. Now let's move on to the commercial functionality which your company may need. The first one is revenue recognition. And this is extremely important for subscription businesses, especially when your company is selling 12 or 24 month plans up front as an example. Next, reporting and analytics is important for your sales and finance teams. A billing solution that includes this functionality will save time and expense compared to buying a third party solution and integrating or connecting it together. Or one thing that's even worse is spreadsheets. Anything to move away from spreadsheets will save staff time and the inconvenience of creating data sets that they need and that are relevant to their jobs. Thirdly, integration into your accounting or ERP system is important because once again, it will save time and money in operational costs. Any solution that prevents you having to exp export and import data between systems not only saves time, but it reduces the chances of errors occurring. Next, let's move on to fraud prevention. E-commerce growth has increased rapidly in the past few years and only accelerated during the lockdowns. Unfortunately, the amount of fraud has also increased in proportion as well. If your company sells goods and services in high volumes, it's simply not feasible for human beings to check suspicious transactions manually. So your billing system must include an element of AI and machine learning to help speed up this process. It may be as simple as using a company like Stripe, which invests heavily in this kind of technology so that you don't have to. Next, although we have CVV numbers on the back of plastic cards, and we've had them for a number of years, this is no longer an adequate way of preventing fraud. 
Credit card companies have added address verification on top as, as well, AVS. But once again, this is just another band-aid on top of an outdated technology. What's really going to help is the billing solution which complies with the standards set out in regulations such as PSD2 regulations. The similarities between them is that to authenticate a transaction, customers will need to meet three criteria. Firstly, through something they know, like a password or a PIN number. Secondly, through something they have, such as a physical device or security key. And thirdly, through something they are, such as a fingerprint or a face scan. A billing system that complies with these requirements will significantly cut fraud. Next, let's look at issuing, which is a relatively new type of feature which payment vendors offer. This means that you could potentially offer a payment card to your customers or end users for various use cases. So one example is delivery food delivery drivers who can be issued with a card to pay for food which they then deliver to an end customer. Another scenario is creating cards for travel expenses and these cards would be loaded with a set amount of money for that trip. It's a relatively new feature from payment companies that do offer this so it may be something that could be appropriate in future even if it isn't right now. Lastly, let's talk about setting up your enterprise subscription billing solution. The time it takes to install a system depends upon the complexity of the products and services you're selling and the complexity of your pricing models. If things are fairly simple, then a system could be installed within a week or two. But for more complex pricing models and businesses, it could take several months. And this is something that you will only find out by talking to a vendor directly. Now let's move on to part two of this video, which is where I want to show you 11 enterprise subscription billing systems that may be suitable for your company and your customers. I'll highlight some of the features of each solution to give you a basic understanding of which one may be a good potential fit. Once again, stay tuned until the very end where I'll be showing you some bonus material which you'll find very useful. First up, let's take a look at two checkout. Two Checkout offers a subscription and billing system that has a very robust set of features that include support for global payment systems, revenue recovery tools such as Dunning Management, account updaters for expired cards, reminders, subscription pausing, and much more. In terms of enterprise features, it has advanced reporting capabilities and revenue dashboards. It is a merchant of record which means your company can act locally in over 200 markets and it also has global tax compliance capabilities as well. Two Checkout's weakness is that it is not the most flexible solution in terms of creating and managing plans and that is essential for software as a service businesses. But take a look at the solution and their website is 2checkout2.com. Number two, checkout .com. Next, let's have a look at Cleverbridge. So Cleverbridge is really focused on selling software as a service, cloud, and software in general. Like 2Checkout, it is also a merchant of record and offers excellent global sales capabilities. Cleverbridge offers a full set of features such as subscription management, self-service, reporting and analytics, and even offers email marketing and performance marketing services to get your company's brand name out there in the relevant markets. Cleverbridge is really more suited to companies that sell in excess of a million dollars worth of software per year. So it really is a great solution for very large enterprises. Next, let's have a look at Digital River. Relative to some of the other companies I've mentioned, Digital River is an older company as it was founded way back in 1994. As it's an older system, Digital River has partnered with other subscription billing platforms such as Fusebill and Chargeify to provide the full set of features that your company may require. I personally think it would probably be better to pick a more modern billing system which has been built from the ground up for subscriptions like Cleverbridge for example instead of using something that has been pieced together in the back end by Digital River. Having said that, there's no harm taking a look at the solution and deciding for yourself whether it's a good fit because Digital Rev River is a, is a strong brand name and it's been around for some time. 
so check out digitalriver.com for more information. Next, let's have a look at Go Transverse. Chatbot, chatbots are so annoying. Go Transverse seems to be a good fit for businesses that need to offer a wide variety of pricing models and trial periods. And it's especially a good solution if contracts, agreements, and selling through partners are a key set of requirements. Like Digital River, they do seem to partner with other companies for certain pieces of functionality. For example, they work with Avalara, which provides the tax component of the solution to ensure that your company will be compliant with global taxes. Next up, we have Paddle. So Paddle is a modern billing solution, which is really optimized for software and digital products. It allows you to design your pricing models, trials, and other logic, along with payment methods, so that the customer experience is seamless. Paddle offers international support, low-cost payment routing, and can even help migrate live subscribers to the platform. The solution offers the kind of features that you would expect for large enterprises, including payment reconciliation, unified data sources to provide insights to the business, and even a revenue delivery advisory to help your company adapt SaaS best practices. Next, let's take a look at Pay Kickstart. One feature that sets Pay Kickstart apart from other solutions is its template library. It provides over 50 templates that are customizable to your company's requirements. This is extremely important for increasing conversions because some products and services sell better with a one-step checkout and others, which are usually more complex products, sometimes sell with more of a multi-step checkout. Pay Kickstart offers the full suite of pricing models such as fixed price or usage based. It enables you to offer trials, discounts, setup fees, one-time charges, and the list goes on, quite frankly. And one extra feature that it offers that I liked was affiliate management. If your company's software or services can be sold quite easily by skilled marketers, or skilled digital marketers especially, this is a great solution which will enable you to take advantage of a hidden army of salespeople around the world without the added cost of hiring extra salespeople. Next, let's take a look at Sage Intact. I've got to say right up front that the Sage website is really set up for a very old school way of selling. They really want you to fill out a form or use their chatbot so that a sales representative or so-called expert can get in contact with you to start a traditional sales process. They have limited information. The, the, the website's very basic, you know, limited information about different capabilities that the solution offers. But they do summarize the key features, such as being able to offer a variety of pricing and billing models, automated revenue recognition, and integration with Sage's own cloud financial software, and integration with Salesforce as well. Sage's heavy focus on integration with their accounting software may be a good fit with your company, especially if you already use their system for your accounting needs. Next, let's take a look at Salesforce Revenue Cloud and the old CPQ name as it was, um, and billing solution. I know from personal experience working in the IT industry that Salesforce offers billing solutions for sales reps that are engaged in complex deals which usually have contracts involved. Salesforce can enable your company to implement complex product and service configurations, different billing models, and integration with partner organizations that are involved in the sales process. Salesforce does have the capability for standardized subscription billing requirements, but I'd imagine that their strength really lies in selling high-end solutions. Please feel free to comment below if your experience with their solution is any different. Next, let's move on to Stripe. Stripe has positioned itself as the payment infrastructure for the internet, and I have to agree, quite frankly. Stripe's subscription billing system can handle the most common requirements, such as per seat pricing or metered billing, and it supports incentives like coupons, free trials, add-ons, and other items that you can think of to sweeten a deal for a customer. But Stripe's other key strength is that you can choose to use either some of its features and building blocks in combination with other software solution. Stripe gives you the ability to customize the payment workflow using their API and integration tools. 
And this really allows you to tailor your enterprise billing solution to your exact requirements. Next, let's take a look at Vindicia. I think that's how you pronounce it. And their subscription capabilities are very comprehensive and they offer everything your company might read, right from an essentials plan, which delivers standard recurring billing, all the way up to plans optimized for companies that are in the growth phase or which are large enterprises. A feature that differentiates them from other providers is called Bundle. And Bundle simplifies the processes to scale new partnerships, including those from aggregators or regular partners. Bundling can help reach new customers and audiences at a much lower cost than marketing and advertising directly within your company. Vindicia also focuses quite heavily on services which help customer retention and reduce churn through providing subscription intelligence information. And last but not least, let's take a look at Zuora, which is a company that is most well known for its subscription billing solution. Zuora has some big customers including Fender Guitars, which offers an online platform to help people learn how to play the guitar, and also GoPro video cameras, which sells subscriptions to its cloud storage and video editing tools. Zuora offers four key components to its solution, as you can see here. The first is Zuora Billing, which offers over 50 charging models and accepts over 180 currencies. The second is Zuora Revenue, which helps with the revenue recognition and contract side of things. Thirdly is Zuora Collect, which uses machine learning to maximize subscription revenue and minimize churn. And lastly, they offer the Zuora Central Platform, which lets you connect different applications and services via APIs. So let me summarize all of the solutions that we've just taken a look at here on this slide. Take a look at each one, visit each company's website and see what potentially could work best for your company and your customers. Now, as I mentioned right at the start of the video, I wanna give you three bonus pieces of content, which I think you'll find very helpful in your research process. So bonus one is here are six additional subscription billing systems which may be suitable in your business if the size of your company is on that borderline or the cusp between being a medium and a large business. These solutions may be absolutely fine depending on your use case. So I'd suggest that you go and take a look at them as well, even if it's simply to arm yourself with more knowledge for your shortlisting process. The second bonus I've created is a checklist for each of the items I discussed in this video. So conveniently, I turned all the slides into bullet points. And if you're more visual like me, I've also provided a mind map version of the checklist. The mind map may look small here, but don't worry, you can easily zoom it in PDF and it looks great on the screen. If you want to get hold of this checklist and mind map, click the link in the description area below and you'll be taken to the location where you can download it. The third bonus is two episodes of my podcast, which I think would help you immensely in your shortlisting process. So in episode 31, I interviewed Doug Cavaness from Cleverbridge, and he has provided some fantastic insights for what you should be considering in an enterprise subscription billing system. The information he provided around selling globally, dealing with taxes, different legal entities and so much more were extremely valuable and it will save you a lot of time if you have questions around these areas. So to find the episode just type the payments.show into your web browser and search for episode 31 and it'll pop, pop up. Next is episode 14 where I interviewed Garima Shah from Billa Genie and she had some fascinating insights around why businesses don't pay their bills and most of the time she said it's got nothing to do with a shortage of money. So I highly recommend that you listen to this episode in case you're having these kinds of payment problems. There are many other episodes which you may find useful as well. And off the top of my head, one of them I can think of is the one I did with Securian Pay, which I think is episode 21. So if you'd like to listen to the episode, once again, just open your web browser and type the payments.show and you'll be taken to the podcast homepage where you can either stream each episode directly or find the link to your favorite podcast app right there on the page. Now, before you go, please comment below on what you're looking for in a subscription billing solution. 
and your experiences with any of the solutions I've discussed in this video. Lastly, please let me know what you'd like me to discuss in the future and please like the video and subscribe to the channel so you get the latest content when it's released. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.